For the following exercises, find the slope of the line that passes through the two given points. All right, so here we have two points, okay? And what I am tasked to do is I'm tasked to find the slope of the line. Okay, so basically what I need to know is I need to know a formula then for slope. You could do this graphically if you wanted to, but I think it might be easiest to think of a formula. Now, slope will f show up in two major equations, all right, that you'll be dealing with. And take a look down here on the right-hand side. Slope will show up in the y is equal to mx plus b formula. This formula is basically the equation of a linear line, okay? And slope will also show up in this formula over here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You might know it as the change in y over the change in x, or the rise of the run, or there's a whole bunch of uh, names to it. I'm going to call this the slope formula though, okay? Slope formula. So basically, this formula, if we, I'm going to write it down, the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This formula basically, in order to find the slope, basically what we need is we need to know the coordinates of two points. Here's one point, and here's the other, okay? Right? So we have two points, so we can basically just plug this in. However, we just have to be careful how we're going to plug it in. Now, it doesn't matter to me which one you call your first point and which one you call your second point. It really doesn't matter. You can do it either way. Why don't you do it both ways and see if it works out the same, which it should. I'm going to call this my point number one, okay? And then I'm going to call this then point number two. If that's the case, and you know that each point has two coordinates, it has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. X is always first, y is always second. What I can then do, basically, and I'll erase, what I can then do is basically call this x1, because it's the first point I called it, right? And this would then be y1. And then what I could do is do the same thing over here, right? Except this is x, this is y, except what I'm going to do is call them both 2. Why? Well, because it's my second point. I define it that way. Literally, all I have to do now is just plug them in. So what's the y2 value? 10, right? Right here. What's the uh, y1 value? 4. What's the x2 value? 4. What's the x1 value? 2. Let's simplify this. 10 minus 4 is 6. 4 minus 2 is 2. 6 over 2 is going to be 3. And there is the slope, ladies and gentlemen. It is positive 3. Try to, try to do it the other way. Define this one as your first point, this one as your second point. You will and should get the same answer. If you do not get the same answer, there's a math mistake you made. Okay? So go back and double check. So guess what? We're going to do the same procedure for all of these. Okay? So watch how easy this is. We'll call this x1 and we'll call that y1. We're going to call this x2, and we'll call that one y2. Now simply write your formula. Slope, and I always want you to keep writing the formula out, by the way. I see a lot of times students might just start plugging in at this stage. I prefer you write out the formula. Why? Well, not to be a pain in the neck, but because the more you write this out, the more you're going to remember it. right? And it's important when you're dealing with a problem that this thing comes up in your mind. How's it going to come up if your mind in your mind if you haven't used it? frequently. All right. So always start with that. You're going to see me always do it. I do it to this day, even if I'm solving a problem on my own, I'm writing it out. Okay. It's a good habit to get into. So y2 is 11. y1 is 5. My x2 is going to be 4. And my x1 is 1. So let's do the math here, right? 11 minus 5 is 6. 4 minus 1 is 3. And 6 divided by 3 is now 2. There's your slope. Last but not least, give this one a shot, pause the video, give it a shot, and see if your answer matches with mine, okay? So here, x1, y1, x2, y2. Let's write out the formula for slope. Slope is equal to y2 minus y1, all divided by x2 minus x1. So now what we simply have to do is plug in the values. So the y2 is 2. The y1 is 4, okay? The uh, x2 is 5, and then minus the x1 now is negative 1. Be careful, because you have to plug that in as a negative 1, and you have to have that negative sign there. If you do not write this negative sign, and you only write this negative sign, it'll be wrong, okay? 
So just be careful. So this literally then works out to now, and maybe I'll move this up a little bit since I might need a little more space. This is going to now, what I'm gonna do is just simplify the numerator. So the numerator works out to be a negative two, right? And then you're gonna divide that now by five minus a negative one. Remember negative times a negative is a positive, so it's really five plus one, which is six, okay? And then simply solving this, doing if you wanted to simplify it, it simply works out to then be equal to negative one third. And that is the answer, okay? So guys, hopefully that helped. Please remember to subscribe, help support us. We appreciate it very much, and we look forward to helping you with more problems. Have a great day.